All right, all right, yep, yep, I know what you're going to say. Yes, it's a new lightweight, limited Porsche. No, you probably can't buy one, even if you have got 155 thousand euros yes i know you're heading straight for the comment section it's a car for collectors it's going to get flipped for a profit i'll tell you what shall we just park all that for a moment call a truce and i'll show you around the new 718 spider rs you didn't need to be a super sleuth detective to spot this one coming really it's basically a boxster gt4 rs a soft top convertible twin to the ultimate Cayman, which won Top Gear's Performance Car of the Year title last year, blitzed our speed week and made everyone on the team deaf. Porsche already has a lighter, gnarlier Boxster in its range, the standard 718 Spider, which develops a healthy 414 brake horsepower. So you're well within your rights to be wondering, what makes the Spider RS so much more extreme? For a start, there is a lot more aero. I mean, if you know your Porsches, you'll spot basically all of this is copy and pasted from a Cayman GT4 RS. There's the intakes in the bonnet, curtain vents down here, more venting out the top of the front wing and this cutout behind the front wheel. In fact, the only difference really is the front splitter. That's slightly shorter to balance out the lower overall downforce that the Spider generates. Also, like the Cayman, the engine breathes in through these intakes on the shoulders, which are a couple of inches from your ear. So you're definitely going deaf. The Spider also gets this lovely double bubble rear deck, makes it look so much more exotic than a normal Boxster. And then that draws your eye down to this huge, well, I was gonna say duck tail, but it's more of a swan tail spoiler, really. I think actually from where you're looking at it from, rear three quarter, that is the Spider RS's angle. It's hunkered down, love that double bubble tonneau cover. I like saying double bubble, as you can tell. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm probably really not helping with the whole try to not want one thing. And neither will the engine, because it's the same 500 horsepower, 9,000 RPM screamer from the 911 GT3 and the Cayman RS. That's a lot of poke for a Boxster. And when you add in the 40 kilo weight saving the RS gets you versus the standard Spider, then you won't be shocked to hear that it's rapid. The numbers? Well, 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds, 0 to 125 miles an hour in 10.9, and a very drafty top speed of over 186 miles an hour. Though if you leave the roof in place, Porsche recommends you don't go much over 120. Problem is, you pay for this world-class love letter to naturally aspirated engines, and then you can't actually see it because like all boxers, you get a huge boot in the back, and then here above the engine is where you find the roof. You see, the Spider RS is still weatherproof, but Porsche had to redesign the normal Spider top because of these air intakes. So they had to put new mounting points and then they thought, oh, maybe we can make it lighter. So this is 16 and a half kilos less than a normal electric folding boxster roof. And it's a lot more complicated. However, if you buy one of these as standard with every purchase, you get a free German man who will follow you around. And whenever it starts to rain, he's on hand to help you put the top up. Oh, Marcus, you're late. <laughs> So let's imagine it's just started raining. Shouldn't be too difficult if you're British. And let's run a clock on this. How long does it take to put the top on a Spider RS? Well, Marcus made that look pretty easy, so I thought I'd have a go at taking it off myself. Bad idea. Inside, it's an ocean of Alcantara, carbon trim, and then floating in the middle is a PDK gear lever. Like every other modern Porsche RS car, you can't have this with a manual. A seven speed paddle shift twin clutch comes as standard, as does a torque vectoring limited slip rear diff, 
forged wheels and adaptive suspension that's a mighty 30 mil lower than a regular Spyder. Actually, it's the suspension that I'm kind of intrigued by because Porsche themselves say that the spring und damper rates have been reduced to achieve a more relaxed, characteristically convertible setup. Now, in English, that sounds to me like they've softened this off for people who like a suntan. And brilliant as the GT4 RS is, it's bloody stiff on the road. So there's a chance that the better balanced road car could be its topless cousin. Wait, cut that out, that sounded wrong. <clears throat> anyway, if you do want your Boxster RS as extreme as possible, Porsche will sell you one of its Visac packs. That brings 935 inspired titanium exhaust outlets and the added option on top of even lighter magnesium wheels. But I bet you're not interested in any of that. I bet you don't even like the whole car. I mean, what is it? Just an expensive umbrella with the best looking box that ever made underneath it with a racing car engine in the back. And yeah, it's the last ever petrol powered Boxster before this goes all electric. So yeah, I guess maybe try to buy one if you like this kind of thing.